Football. 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 Football keeps changing lives on a daily basis. Millions of human lives around the world. For more than a century, the power football exerts on people is inextricably entangled with human habitation. Entire cities fall under its spell. The real basis of power is fan club rivalry, often within the confines of one and the same city. Fans take the contest to the streets, often at the cost of serious injury, even death. Rangers versus Celtic, Milan versus Inter, Real versus Atletico, CSK versus Levski. But there is a city out there where history is written in an altogether different manner. One city, one club. It has been this way for over a century in the southern Bulgarian city of Stara Zagora and its team Baroy. In 1916, Europe was in the throes of the Great War. It was at this critical juncture that the martial abilities of some Bulgarian commanders became readily apparent and entered the syllabi of military academies everywhere. General Stefan Toshev, a Stara Zagora native, commanded the Third Army which smashed the allied Russian-Romanian troops in the northern Bulgarian province of Dobrudja. Led by brilliant commanders like Generals Toshev, Kolev and Kantar Djev, the Bulgarians provided a textbook example of how to turn the table on an adversary enjoying significant numerical advantage. A desperately brave attack is key backed by some clever tactics. The Bulgarian triumph occurred in the same year that football came to Stara Zagora. The club often finds itself in a similar position, having to compete against richer and distinguished adversaries. Baroy has always been more than your run-of-the-mill, small-time club blessed with fervent supporters. Rather, its membership shares the same mentality. Walking into the stadium is like coming home, so that even if one does not know one's neighbour, rapport comes immediately. You both support Baroy, you come from the same city, you belong to one family. FC Barcelona's motto is more than a club. 
FC Baroy is more than a club too. In fact, it is more than a city. 2016 saw the publication of a book marking the 100th anniversary of the club. Here is a quote from it. Everyone in Stara Zagora and the region supports Baroy. Men, women, young and old, business, local government, employers and employees, policemen, the stadium security, the junior sides, a team, the veterans, all cannot wait until the next game. The supporters are among the most demanding in the country. The older ones have seen countless generations of players don the green and white jersey. Нашите фенове са най-прекрасни, най-всеотдайни и постоянно подкрепещи нашия любим отбор. Стара Загора е един футболен град и феновете са неотлъчна част от отбора. How did it all unfold though? The second decade of the 20th century was a dramatic time for humanity. The Great War raged on. It had only been 30 years since Bulgaria had clawed back its independence following five centuries of Ottoman rule. Stara Zagora was already among the largest and most important cities of the young kingdom of Bulgaria. Around 13,000 men from the region were drafted into the army. Even so, life went on as it did much in the rest of Europe. The city had its own rhythm. A focal point was the railway station, in the vicinity of which the townsfolk first played football. The improvised pitch was a stone's throw away from the railway tracks, backing onto people's yards. The first proper pitch was located in the area known as Gurdjikov Alan, above the station's garden. Today the area is submerged under a lake. Organized sport did exist in the city. An association promoting sport and tourism, bearing the medieval name of the club, Varia, came into being. The football club retained the older Thracian moniker, Baroy. The team coalesced around the association. 
It brought together forward-thinking and physically capable young men. They called themselves a gang. The boys imbued the word gang with a sense of romanticism, harking back to the years of the Bulgarian National Revival when gangs of armed daredevils fought for the liberation of their country. So how does one make a decision that will change the fates of generations of men and their families? The way that it usually happens in European history. A party of gentlemen gathered together behind closed doors and openly said to one another, it is time we left our sons something meaningful. The gang began practicing on the 6th of May, 1916. A rival group of working class boys, printers by trade, set up another team, Victor. The same year saw teams from neighboring cities visit. The first were from Plovdiv and Sliven. Baroy won both games. From then on, football settled into its usual routine of home and away games. The remaining two years until the end of the Great War were too bloody for football. Nevertheless, the city railway station proved important as trainloads of foreign soldiers passed through. And while they were waiting for their cars to be transferred, they kicked a ball around the Gurdjikov Alan. Rerouting sometimes took days, so football was the winner. The first leather balls appeared in the city. These games took place in front of appreciative crowds and followed the set rules of the game as they were codified in Europe. Football games between soldiers of the various warring sides during the World War I and World War II are an interesting phenomenon. One of the first cities to host such games was Stara Zagora. Their cosmopolitanism is not accidental. Stara Zagora has seen much drama in its millennia of history. The First World War was preceded by the Balkan Wars of 1912 and 1913. It was in Stara Zagora at a local church that Bulgarian Tsar Ferdinand read out the manifesto announcing the start of the First Balkan War. That conflict saw a coalition between Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece and Montenegro wrestle control of their historic territories on the peninsula from the Ottoman Empire. Stara Zagora hosted the Bulgarian army headquarters from the outset of hostilities. The Tsar was supreme commander and as such traveled to the city where he was quartered at the Buchcheva house which has been preserved for posterity. They say it was in that house that the Tsar kept a large golden cross which he intended for the dome of the St. Sophia Cathedral in Istanbul. He did not doubt the mother of all cities would be recovered for Christianity by his victorious armies. Fate decided otherwise. Times were tough for Bulgaria, though. The country was on the losing side of the Balkans Wars and the Great War, too. The population sank into poverty and was not about to start paying to attend sporting events. The new era required the teams to train properly, to buy equipment, to travel for away games.
the game was in flux. Teams sprang into existence, fell apart, came together, changed their names. It was during these unsettled times that the current club was born. It survived through thick and thin and into the present. Yes, it was preceded by others. Stara Zagora remained an important railway junction. The older generations remember the now defunct railway workers club locomotive. World War II began in September 1939, the bloodiest of all modern conflicts. Sport is in no one's mind. As in the previous world conflagration, Bulgaria is allied to Germany. After the war, Bulgaria was subjected to regime change. The country was forced to adopt communism, Soviet style. Communism was merciless towards its political opponents, but proved favorable to sport competitiveness, especially football, as long as communists were in control, of course. So what happened to Baroy? Between 1945 and 1959, the club changed names multiple times. It was called Septembri, Shipka, Stroitel, Udarnik, Botev, and even Levski for a short period of time between 1947 and 1949. But first things first. In March 1959, the best footballers in the city come together in that club that would hereby be known as Baroy. Football is about to embark on its years of glory. So what lies ahead? Winning the Balkan Club Championship in 1968. Baroy is the first Bulgarian club to win that trophy. It will go on to repeat its triumph three more times in 1969, 1981 and 1983. In 1986, Baroy was crowned national champion. In 2010, it was a winner of the Bulgaria Cup. In 2013, in addition to that trophy, it won the Super Cup. The club took part in many dramatic finals too. Bulgaria boasts clubs with bigger and better endowed trophy cabinets. However, for most of its history, Baroy was forced to swim against the current. In Bulgaria, communism remained in power for 45 years, between 1945 and 1989. The regime was especially ardent in developing cinema and sport. The two main propaganda weapons it fielded in the ideological battle it waged with the West. The party determined what films were to be made and how games would turn out. 
the clubs that represented the military and the police were the most privileged. They were CSKA, the Central Sporting Club of the Army, and Levski, respectively. All the players had military ranks. Oftentimes, the defense comprised of lieutenants, the wingers were captains, and majors and the goalie, a lieutenant colonel. To face the teams that symbolized the regime was not altogether a vastly different experience to that of peaceful demonstrators clashing with the gendarmerie. The arsenal of the status quo clubs included a whole range of dirty tactics, including army and police generals pressuring the club management to lose the game against the Grands. A refusal to comply could lead to very serious consequences, given the entrenched nature of the regime. One risked losing one's livelihood and that of one's family. време комунистическата партия на България подкрепеше отборите на ЦСК и Левски, нищо че бяха едни от силните отбори. Така отбора на ЦСК и Левски ставаха шампиони. Днес младите хленчат за какво ли не, но те не знаят какво нещо е да игра срещу Левски и ЦСК и срещу съдиите. There was much unpleasantness. After a series of scandalous referee decisions, the club was kicked out of the elite division. Non-existent penalties were given against the side at the last possible minute. Opponents were extremely brutal and often injured Baroi players. I don't remember that the Levski or CSK was <laughs> последните минути или при резултат 1 на 0 или 0 на 0. Първо търсихме вината в себе си и после в останалите. Nevertheless, it was another practice that proved most destructive and was resented by coaches coaching young talent. A 17-year-old goal scorer faced a choice. Either do two years of crushing army service and be forgotten for good, or join a club from the big smoke, be paid many times what his teammates in the country would get, and hit the big time. A real talent would also automatically receive an officer's rank with all the attendant perks, such as an apartment and a car. One was assured of a tremendous popularity. So what would you choose? The first and most important casualty was the future top goal scorer of Europe and holder of the Golden Ball Award, Petar Zhekov. After five seasons with Baroy, he was compelled to move to CSKA. His case serves to illustrate why loyalty to Baroy in those times was testimony to the moral fortitude of those on the Stara Zagora team who chose to remain. Being from Stara Zagora and from Baroy has always been one and the same. During the 1969 to 1970 season, Levski, the Interior Ministry Club, was in line to win the title that previous year had gone to their mortal enemy, CSKA, the Defense Ministry Club. 
къщи с поманени редици възторжено манифестират своите величави завоевания. Единство и международна Левски was due to play Baroy at their home ground. По това време превъзхождахме отборите от А група благодарение на дисциплината на физическата подготовка и добрите взаимоотношения помежду си. Бяхме приятели, големи приятели. Наистина нямаше празни на който да ни празнувахме заедно. The Star Zagora team was in top form and could beat any opponent. The stands were packed. Roy led 1-0 until the 89th minute. Levski was awarded a corner, their last chance to turn the game in. The Baroy keeper, Todor Krastev, went for the ball, but as he rose into the air, two Levski players pushed him and held him down. Levski scored an easy goal. The referee pointed to the center spot. One all. The crowd went silent in total disbelief. Baroy should have been awarded a foul. Then there was an uproar. Bottles flew in the direction of the Minister of the Interior, a fanatical Levski supporter who had come to see the game. The police went into emergency mode. Behavior like this could not go unpunished in a totalitarian state. A few days later, the Roy was demoted from the top flight with the silent approval of the party leader Todor Zhivkov. Най-драматичният момент в моята кариера е когато не дадахме две точки на Левски и ни извадиха от А Републиканска футболна група. The club had to start again in the championship as a medium-sized team from a provincial city. The fortunes of many people took a turn for the worse, but the club had to rise again. Salvation lay in the hands of its management. For many years, one man had maintained the delicate balance between football and power in the city. Boncho Mirjanov. He had discovered and brought in many young talents. The fateful encounter with Levski put an end to his career too. Another victim was General Delcho Delchev. Delchev had mentored many of the players. What is more, he had motivated the boys. Football had become his life. However, when confronted by the most influential people in the country, he had to take a step back too and accept an unjust punishment. Baroy remained in the championship for one year and had no real competition. It returned the following season and came third after CSKA and Levski in 1972. It was the best that could be done under the circumstances and a form of poetic justice. Even though the team was in top form, it had just made the transition from a lower division and could not get ahead of the two most prominent clubs in the country. That was still in the future. Старозагорските футболисти отстраниха от своя път представителите на Люксембург и Испания, Фала и Атлетико Билбао и се класираха за четвърт финала на турнира между носителите на националните купи, като още веднъж доказаха, че имат качество да се представят много добре на международния терен.
Най-драматичният момент е, когато можехме да спечелим купата на КНК, но се наложи да играем с резервите срещу Магдебург. The 1985-1986 season was the most remarkable for Baroy. Виждате как изглеждат изклоновете на Аязмото над стадион Бероне. След идването в началото на този шампионат на Евгений Анчовски като старши тренер. Илиев, Драголов, Драголов, 1 на 0 за Берое, минутата е седма. Under the tutelage of Evgeny Janczowski, the club became national champion. В въздуха старши треньорът на Берое, Евгений Янчовски. Striker Vasil Dragolov scored the final goal in the most memorable day for Stara Zagora. Никой не ни е поставял цел да ставаме шампиони. Ние сами си повярвахме в нашите сили и възможности. След като победихме Етър в Велико Търново на неутрален терен и се борихме до край и спечелихме шампионска титла. The same season marked the 70th anniversary of the club. Да се бероят, това значи да си шампион, защото бероя винаги е произвеждало футболисти на европейско ниво. The Berlin Wall would fall three years later. The influence of ministries and sundry would fade away. Until the end of communism, only a selected few had the privilege to play overseas, not to mention for big European clubs. Foreigners had not been allowed into Bulgarian clubs either. The restrictions only began to be eased in the early 80s. The first Bulgarian footballer who signed to a Western team was Baroy's top scorer Petko Petkov. In 1972, Baroy overpowered the team of Austria, Vienna, for the UEFA Cup after a 7-0 thrashing at home and a 3-0 away win. Petkov scored seven of the ten goals. The Austrians were extremely impressed but could not offer him a contract as no such deal was possible at the time. Austria, Vienna, waited on the sidelines for eight years before they were able to conclude the deal. By the 90s, many Bulgarian players had joined the elite clubs of Western Europe. Хората ме питат кой е любимия ми гол. Отвръщам. Питайте Кашеров, той има два и може да избере. Какви голове бе? На мен ми бяха забранили да минавам центъра, понеже съм бъркал играта. Despite the chronic underfunding of most Bulgarian clubs, the national championship was organized and conducted along professional lines. Premiership players were fully professional too.
money became the crucial factor determining club success. And money replaced the influence of army and police and again came into the hands of selected few. Nothing could be done about that. But then, fans of Baroy amply compensated for the shortage. They always had a fine sensibility for the hardship that lay ahead of their favorite side and were at hand to steady the ship through troubled water. And under their patronage, the hundred-year-old ship sails out of every storm. It has always been like that and always will be. Baroy's best years are still to come. Защитник на Берой може да сложи край на този магичен матч. Гол! Купата е за Берой! Берой печели купата на България! Удари това е гол! Наказателно е. Удар към вратата! Гол! Антоно! Гол! 2010 and 2013, the club won the National Cup. In 2013, it doubled its success by winning the Super Cup. Moment of pressure, and everyone is prepared. The dead stop on the national stadium. Udar Beroy Pechelli Super Cup in Bulgaria in 2013. Radostal, it will still be for Stara Zagora for this evening. With 6 on 4, after the completion of Duspi, Beroy is holding the third trophy in the rank only for a few months. And I think that Duspi can be the first one. One game, though, will stay with the fans for a hundred years to come. Beating the mighty Italian side Juventus 1-0 in 1979, when Juve was the strongest team in Europe. Legends such as Dino Zoff, Claudio Gentile, Antonio Cabrini, Marco Tardelli, Roberto Betica were all part of that memorable encounter that was more like the struggle between David and Goliath than a football game. Характерните качества по това време бяха борбеност, атакуващ стил, голяма взаимопомощ по терена, бързо проливане от защита в нападение, голямо себераздаване и борбен дух. И така успяхме да победим Ювентус в онази далечна 1979 година. Нашето поколение 
с ради феновете, с една атрактивна игра и с много добри резултати. There is one other trait characteristic of Baroy fans. They are not ashamed of dips in form. They remember the good times, the victories, and look forward to more and greater success. They look forward to future great games. They always love their team and their city and proudly display its treasures to the visitor. What happens when there is an important game ahead and there is a rehearsal at the city's famed opera house? The Star Azagora Opera House was founded in 1925, at a time when football was getting into its stride too. Ninety-one years later, in the spring of 2016, the house will stage Giacomo Puccini's Tosca, and here they are, the football crowd, all inside that other temple, to the arts. Феновете са не само фенове. Те са фенове на Беро, а Беро е Стара Загора. Трудно мога да си представя да живея в друг град, освен Стара Загора. Today, football is a global industry worth billions. No Eastern European side can hope to compete and get to the top yet, to measure up to the best and richest in the game. That's why every win, every international success at Baroy, of Ferenc Varos, of Partizan Belgrade, is to be cherished. It comes with hard work, ambition, and pride. Possibly the best-known football motto in the world is Liverpool's You'll Never Walk Alone. It is a powerful and touching message which was borrowed from an old musical. The Roy, on the other hand, has the most original, passionate, most democratic motto ever. It goes like this. Nyama moi, nyama te boy, sitko e Baroy. Forget what is yours, forget what is mine, all is Baroy's. Naturally, anthems are meant to be sung at the stadium. 
Here is what fans have to say of the temple. We are not a crowd. We are family. We are the Roy. Women hold a pride of place in the Stara Zagora football family. The city is famed for its extremely good-looking girls. Hence, playing for Baroy is a privilege. The last game for the team in the Jubilee 2016 was last spring. Third place in the championship was assured, but the visiting side had to be beaten regardless. And the visiting side were none other than Levski. It was a lovely sunny day, typical of Star Zagora. Baroy won the right to take part in European competitions again. Their first opponent was the Bosnian side, Radnik. The away game took place in Bosnia's second largest city, Banja Luka. The game attracted much interest. The team and the fans were brimming with confidence. And rightly, as it turned out, they won 2 0. One day, Baroy will be champions again. The fans are firmly convinced that it will happen and do not hide their desire. Every club goes through ups and downs. Trophy cabinets remind one of glorious victories. Baroy has something more, the irrepressible love for the club, of its fans, strong will and faith that fill out the temple and touch everyone present on the stands. We believe that we'll win through skill, Dragolov. hunger and fair play. Because we are playing for the family. The family is more important than trophies. One city, one team, one family. So the story begins anew.
Oh, oh, oh.